So when we are talking about player controllers, we can find tons of them. From very basic platform controllers that you can find in games such as Mario Bros. Or you also have this other type of controller which is um, mostly encountered in RPG games. In this video, where we are going to be talking about the differences between the two and how to implement them inside of Godot. And basically, these concepts are going to allow you to create better, more accurate controllers or even just understand this topic a little bit more. Because sometimes we just create player controllers in automatic but we don't really understand what is going on. So how I like to think about this is that we have two main types of controllers that at least we're going to be analyzing this video. Platformer controllers and top-down controllers. The best way to understand this, at least at a first sight, is to look at some games that actually implement this type of controllers. In this case, we just have Mario, okay, which has this platformer controller. And on the other hand, we also have a top-down controller, which is, for example, available on Stardew Valley, okay? Which are the key points in these two? Is that basically they are the complete opposite, okay? Or actually, it should be this. This is the opposite, okay? Um... So this is what we have to understand. In a platformer controller, what we have is gravity as a jumping in the player. That's why it's usually called a platformer controller because you tend to encounter this type of controller in platformer games such as Mario Bros. Then you also have the top-down controller, which is, as we have mentioned, the opposite. So it doesn't have gravity nor jumping. It's called top-down because it's usually implemented in this kind of top-down games where the camera is a little bit angled. It's not straight with a zero angle as in this game. And this creates a, some kind of perspective also over here, which is quite different from what we have in Mario Bros. Now, let me actually show you these types of controllers in real games, okay? So, this is a Godot game that I created myself, which is called Jump Ball, and it has a platformer type of controller. As you can see, I can jump, okay? And the player also has some kinds of gravity. Basically, here, the objective of the player is to collect coins and to survive at the same time while there are some obstacles running towards the player, okay? So, here we can see everything that we have talked about. The player moves, the player jumps, and there is a force attracting the player to the floor, which is basically the gravity. And how is this all set up? Actually, it is quite, quite simple. So let me first of all go to the car, uh, to the player scene. And the first things that we find directly over here are the following ones. So on the first hand, what we find is the player, okay, itself, which is basically a character body to the node. More on that later. It also has an animated sprite, as you can see, which basically serves as the animation of the player and also a collision shape and a jump audio. So quite simple elements for us to understand. So now if we open up this script, we may find like even more code than just the player movement itself. But anyway, it is going to be quite easy to understand. So the first question is, why would we use exactly a character body? and not any other type of node, such as, I don't know, um, a node 2D, an area 2D, a static body, etc. Well, that is a topic that can actually go on its own video itself, but I quickly want to address the following. If we go to the 2D node, we find collision objects, okay, which are basically the bodies or the objects themselves or the nodes that can detect collisions with others, and we have it. Area 2D and physics bodies to this. These three, they are somehow related to physics and they have an impact on the physics of the game itself. Whereas an area 2D is never affected by physics because it's only meant to be exactly that, an area with which you can detect collisions. Once again, I don't want to get too technical, it's not the scope of the video, but basically here you would still be able to get quite a similar result for example, using a rigid body, a character body or an area 2D. You would just have to adjust some logic you would not be able to use a static body because this body is indeed static so it cannot move you would still have to modify a little bit the logic okay uh, but still it would be quite quite similar so what we do first of all is that we go to the physics um process function okay and why the physics process and not the process because here as as you can see we are talking about physics themselves or to make it more general, related to movement. So in this case, we must have to use physics process because what we are moving over here 
is basically a physics body to d which is basically this category because it is a body that is affected by physics as you can read right over there if we were moving an area for example or any other type of node we should perform these exact same actions but in process once again i don't want to get too technical i just want to give you the clear takeaway so if first of all we are not on floor we basically get the gravity which is got from uh, the project settings and we just multiply this by delta this is basically let's think of this as a formula to apply gravity also pretty interesting thing about character body 2d is that it has its own built-in method is on floor so checking whether we are not on the floor is quite simple and straightforward then if we press the action to jump which is basically the space bar and we are on the floor we basically perform the jump this line right here performs that jump so it's basically equal to saying okay set the y velocity to some kind of uh, jump velocity why is it a negative and not a positive value and by the way this should be a constant over here not a variable but once again something out of the scope of this video because in godot in the y-axis if we move down sorry if we decrease the y the object goes up and if we increase it it actually goes down so it's the opposite to the normal logic or to the uh, to what we know about maths okay so it's right the opposite now in order to get the direction basically left uh, and right what we do is to create a new variable called direction and what we use here is input dot get axis and here we provide a negative action and a positive action so once again these are all actions that you create directly on your input map move left move right and the easiest way to understand this is to just print it right away so print direction and now let's see the values that we get i am now pressing nothing so zero if i press d okay it's one if i press a it's minus one so it's basically doing that calculation for us and using this value we can directly okay apply the velocity if we want once again here we have a global dot speed plus extra speed let's think of this as if this was just a normal speed basically just the code has some uh, other logic here to calculate the speed but it's not important for this video if direction means that if we are moving so if we want to actually move if direction in reality means that direction is not equal to zero and if not direction which means is that the that direction is indeed zero so it will be if direction equals zero in that case what we do is deaccelerate in reality if you just set a velocity dot x equals to zero the effect is going to be quite quite similar then here i am also updating the flip h property of the animated sprite according to the direction but once again that's not something that we want to cover right right now um and then we call move and slide move and slide the only thing that it will actually is going to be doing in short is going to make sure that this velocity value that we are updating over here takes place this velocity as you can see is not a variable it's not a constant it's not a function it's a built-in value inside of the character body and if we want these things to take effect we have to call move and slide if we don't call move and slide the game won't actually work well it will work but the player will never actually move okay uh, and then we'll also have here another function to update the animation according to this direction but the code is quite simple itself you can pause the video and check it out if you want and lastly i am also clamping uh, the player's position to avoid it from going outside of the screen so that was for the platformer controller which was the most complicated one and now i have here another example but in this case this is from um, a top-down a control so as you can see i have no gravity i cannot jump i just move left right up and down accordingly and here in this game i just basically have to click on these slimes to kill them if i am uh, if i collide with the slime well the game restarts okay quite quite simple and in this case once again i'm using here a character body we could definitely do something super simple with an area 2d and i will show you how to do it in a second by the way um so what we do is quite simple i just have here a constant with the speed once again this can be a variable but it's better to declare it as a constant as its value won't be changed uh once again i'm using here the physics process because i want to move a physical object or an object that has physics so if we want to do it we must do it on the physics process if we are doing this on an area 2d we should not do it on the physics process we could directly do it on the process now uh, for the input uh, direction what we're going to be doing is quite similar to what we have done but here we are not going to be getting an axis we're going to be getting a vector 
And once again, here it has different a proper a parameters that we have to provide we have a negative x a positive x this is the same thing or well quite similar to what we used to have in the get axis we had a negative and a positive value but we also have a negative y and a positive y so by here basically providing your own input for left right up and down you can think of this as, as if this was some kind of formula once again these are just input actions over here with w a s and d controls here I just get the input direction, multiply it by its speed, and with that I can once again call move and slide. If you want to see better what input direction is, we can directly print it, and it's going to be even easier to understand. In this case, as you can see, if I press A, for example, it's minus 1 on the X, D is 1 in the, in the X axis, so it's the same as we used to have before, but now we can also move up and down basically so that's why the, the y value also changes uh, accordingly let's super quickly transform this in order to make it work with an area then also here the question may come why did you create it with a character body and not with an area 2d basically because it's a little bit easier uh, and we also avoid getting to more complicated concepts such as delta time so here if i basically change the type to an area 2d i also have to change here the extents since this doesn't extend character body anymore this extends area and since we start to get some errors, we don't have a velocity because, as I told you, velocity exists just in character bodies to this. We don't have a move and a slide method either because it's built in inside of the character body to the class. If I comment it, as you can see, function move and slide not found in base self. It doesn't exist anywhere. So let's actually comment this and um, let me show you how you can uh, make this work. So first of all, let me delete that print. We don't need it anymore. So what we had to do here is just get our uh, position plus equals input direction times a certain speed. So quite similar until now. But here we also have to multiply this by delta time. Okay. As simple as that in reality. If we now play, we should have the exact same result. But in reality here, well, I'm getting some errors. Well, because here I define the player as if it were a character body 2D, but once again, it's not a character 2D anymore, it's an area. I may even have some errors, but I believe, yes, here it should be working, as you can see, the exact same way. What is not working correctly are the collisions, because how I detect collisions here is to uh, with detecting with a body enter signal, and this is not a body anymore, this is an area, but once again, the player control itself, you can see that it's working in the exact same way. Now, why did I create as a character body? Because it was... A little bit easier uh because the code is a little bit easier to understand in general and you don't have to get into using delta time because the velocity automatically is multiplied by delta time okay and um, of a character but if not here you have to explicitly multiply this by delta time and for a beginner understanding what delta time is could be a little bit complicated now, if you like how I explain and you want to learn more about Godot, I have a full course in which I explain you how to create the game that I showed you a second ago. Basically, this one, okay, of the guy uh, jumping around and dodging uh, these vehicles. Its original price is $45, but using the link in the description down below, uh, four days left at this price, you're going to be able to get it at uh, $10. But we completely agree with you, this discount will expire on this day that you can check over here. So make sure that you don't miss it, because it's going to just be available for something like 4-5 days. Link in the description, enroll right now, and I will see you there.